it's Wendy Hall with New Bedford Festival Theater, executive producer. Uh, we're working on The Wiz and just have a little chat with our director choreographer, the esteemed Kenny Ingram. How are you, Kenny? I am fantastic. I am so excited and I am waiting for y'all to come out here and come see this show and come on down and come what? Ease on down the road, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny has boundless energy, as you can see. Kenny, why don't you tell us a little bit about the concepts behind The Wiz, how you wanted to put your own personal spin on this production, mm -hmm. and why it's important for everybody to see the show. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you this. This is very important for all of us to see this show. I mean, we all know The Wizard of Oz, but this is The Wiz, and it's about the black culture. I was introduced to The Wiz back in 1979 when I was a teenager, and I saw a national tour come through San Jose, California, starring Lilius White. Some of you may know her. She was in a she's in Hades Town right now. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, that's the show that introduced me to doing what I'm doing right now, which is musical theater. So it, it represents Alvin Ailey, dance theater. It represents Lewis Johnson from the movie of The Wiz. If you remember Diana Ross, when she played Dorothy in The Wiz, some of you may have seen that movie. But I'm going to tell you, we have put the new Bedford up in this production of The Wiz. So y'all got to come out here and come see what your wonderful, wonderful Wendy Hall has brought to your town. I mean, it's amazing. This cast is dynamic. We have Jaden Dominique, who was just newly out of U the Texas University, and I basically have discovered her, basically. We have Kyla Jade, who you know from The Voice. Come on, so you gotta come and support her. And then you have Lawrence Flowers, for those of you who are in the gospel church. We got the gospel up in here for you too. So let me tell you, come on out and click your heels three times. Boogie in your seats. Please stand up in the aisles and dance. Listen to that music. He's on down, he's on down, he's on down, he's on down. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, before we, before we end, we always ask everybody, what's your favorite New Bedford spot and why? <laughs> Matt, cork and wine. Matt, the host, <laughs> Allison. I know them by names. And I also love Moby Dick's. I love Moby Dick's. So my two favorite places. Yeah. All right, y'all. Thanks. All right. Thank you. We're going to let Kenny get back to work. Thank you so much. You. Come see the Wiz. Please. Now we are here with Martinez McNeil, who plays the iconic role of the Tin Man. Hi, Martinez. How are you? I'm well, Wendy. How's it going? Really good. Really good. So you are a native or a local, local-ish. So why don't you tell us a little bit about um, your background and performing um, here and, uh, and in Boston? Certainly. Um, do you want to hold it? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, as she said, I'm a native of Massachusetts, born and raised north of the city of Malden. And um, I've always been involved in music. My dad was a classically trained singer and piano player. Uh, so he definitely forced me as a child. I was not willing, <laughs> but I can appreciate it now, um, the lessons and everything that he taught me. Um, so I did a bunch of performing locally, regionally. Um, more recently, in the past few years, I've gotten into some film and commercial work and modeling. And um, I'm making my way back to the stage with the Wiz. Um, when you're local and you see a casting call for the Wiz, you have to submit. You just have to audition because it's the Wiz, if for nothing else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did I, yeah, were you in the Whitney Houston movie? Yes, I was. I was. That was a cool experience. Um, I was a core extra. Uh, so I was in a very small scene, myself and four other guys were sitting in an apartment watching her sing the national anthem. Um, and at certain points during the production, I had to keep telling myself, like, that's not Whitney. Like, this is not real. Just because they really bring you into that mm -hmm. moment. Similar to The Wiz, um, you find yourself in Oz and you feel it, you hear it. You can almost smell it, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I, I still remember remember watching Whitney Houston sing the national anthem. <laughs> and, right, right. And it's unforgettable. It's unforgettable. Yeah, definitely. So you play the Tin Man. Um, absolutely brilliant, brilliantly, I might add. Um, and uh, my favorite part is when you run and you can't really <laughs> bend your knees. It's, it's absolutely hysterical. Um, so being the Tin Man, you have a little bit of a dance number. A little bit. It is way more than a little bit. It is a lot. A lot of movement. I consider myself a singer who moves. And in this show, I am definitely dancing. Um, Kenny and Brianna are both phenomenal. And they've both managed to show me that I can do things that I had no idea that I could do with my body and my legs. Mm -hmm. That's always uh, so fulfilling. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. And then at the end of Act One, you have this great, beautiful, smooth song. Um, tell us about how you approach that from an acting point. Uh, what would I do if I could feel, um, in my opinion, is like the my power ballad. It's my power ballad of the show. And it's funny because you go from all of these like bright, upbeat, happy, gospely, feely kind of song. And then this one takes you down this poppy sort of R&B feel, um, which I've made the backstory that the Tim Man is quite the ladies man. So that song kind of helps me to play into that and pull on some emotions and, you know, just really tell a story through this moment where he doesn't have a heart, but he's saying to the ladies in the house, imagine if I could feel, what would I do if I could feel? If I could suddenly feel And know once again That what I feel I love watching you sing the song. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a high point in the show. So, as always, we like to ask, um, I know you're native-ish, um, but is there a place in New Bedford that you found, and why do you love it? There is. Um, so there's a, a street called Seaview Road, and um, I just like to kind of venture out when I'm in a new place, and I found this spot. You drive down this road, and then at the end of it, there's just water. There's a beach. Mm -hmm. It's just like if you didn't go down, you wouldn't know it's there. Uh, so a few times, quite a few times on lunch break, I've just gone there with a sandwich and just sat mm -hmm. and literally left my phone in the car and just listened to the water um, to kind of center myself and gather myself before mm -hmm. coming back into the chaos that can be a rehearsal hall. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you know, Living on the coast, it's it's, so it's such a there gift, so yeah. Many spots. You can even leaving here and within a five minute walk, there are just yeah. so many little nooks and crannies that you can just have a minute to yourself, yeah. which is great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us today. Thank you can you. see Martinez on stage April twenty seventh through May sixth at the Zyterian Performing Arts Center. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we have done a lot of really interesting things with this production of The Wiz that are different than um, our normal uh, way we do things. Uh, one thing is that because of our, the voices of the actors that we have in our cast, uh, many of which are recording artists in their own, you know, in their own life, um, they have such incredible voices that we have had to make adjustments to our sound to make sure that they sound the absolute best the best that they possibly can sound. So one thing that we did for this show is that we chose to have our orchestra be remote from the orchestra pit. Now I know a lot of people, you know, like to see the orchestra and the orchestra pit and, you know, that whole choreography of it, but to ensure that they sounded the best, um, they are actually in the Pendler space. If you're familiar with the Zyterian, we go into the lobby and then to the left there's a bar and then beyond that is is a little space so we've set them all up there they all have their own video and audio feed into the stage and there are cameras um, one is focused on Charles Duke the music director and his conducting and then there's also television screens um, that the actors can see that are hung up that the audience wouldn't see. And so Charles is actually conducting them uh, on the screen. So it definitely takes a little coordination to get used to that in terms of timing. Um, but I promise you that the sound quality is like none other. And everybody, the band and the, and the actors sound incredibly good. The other thing that we have done is that we have added community um, and educational outreach to this show. We had a free master class with Kenny Ingram, who's the director choreographer, and uh, that was with uh, students from the YWCA, the Boys and Girls Club of New Bedford, and Stage Artistry Studios. They learned a um, there were 29 kids from 6 to 18 that learned a combination from the Wiz Ease on Down the Road. It was a fantastic time. We also have a school time performance, and that's the first time we've ever done that, uh, funded in part partially by the Art is Everywhere grant uh, through New Bedford Creative, and we're really, really thankful and appreciative that we were um, given that grant. So at 9.30 on May 3rd, the entire sixth grade of New Bedford is going to see The Wiz. And they're not seeing a watered down version, they're not seeing a shortened version, they are seeing this show. 
uh, top to bottom with these cast members. And after that, they're gonna have a talk back with the cast members. And all of this is coordinated with our director of education, Dr. Elizabeth Betancourt, and we'll have a full house. So being able to bring these kids um, a Broadway show, something that they may not have access to or have yet had access to in their lives um, is incredibly important to us um, to create that equity because theater is a community sport. <laughs> theater is for everybody. Um, one of the reasons uh, why we decided to do street art in front of the theater uh, with local street artist Mandy Frazier um, we painted the yellow brick road. We wanted the entire community to feel like they were a part of this show uh, beyond, you know, just the two and a half hours that they're on stage. I am here with Christopher Page Sanders, who is our dance captain and also plays the Eye of the Tornado. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Really good, really good. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your association with The Wiz? Absolutely. So I am Christopher Page Sanders. I am the Eye of the Tornado. I'm also an ensemble member, so I play a variety of different roles throughout the production as well. Um, and I'm also the dance captain for the show, so my job is to make sure that once the director and associate choreographer leaves, that the show stays intact in its true intention for what the director wanted and the choreographer wanted. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the tornado, which is its own dance piece in itself. It's absolutely stunning. Um, Chris is uh, the eye of the tornado, which is you know the, the, the main dance part of it. So tell us a little bit about the tornado. Yeah, so as you know, uh, <laughs> Dorothy gets to Oz uh, through a tornado, through this experience of the tornado. Um, and what the tornado is in this production is a ballet. It's a contemporary ballet, but it really is a ballet that um, pays homage to all of the black dance artists that came before us. So Catherine Dunham, Alvin Ailey. Uh, George Faison, uh, Jeffrey Holder, and there's just so many people whose shoulders that we stand on. And Kenny's intention was to really pay tribute and to pay homage to those people. Um, so we use a lot of the different uh, vocabularies of the Lester Horton technique of classic jazz um, to create this storm. And what we're doing in creating this storm is, is basically bringing Dorothy to Oz. Um, as we do it, what is it like? It's kind of, it feels like being shot out of a cannon. Um, it's definitely like energetic and it's like in your face. Um, but there's also, I think something that we found in the middle of it yesterday was that there's a there's a calmness what is what is the eye of the storm the eye of the storm is destructive um, but there's also a calming energy too and we are responsible like our duty as the tornado my duty as the eye of the storm is is to be responsible for getting her into this land mm -hmm. too so yeah that's amazing to you know a lot of audiences might not be familiar with just how intentional every step every thought every images um, and especially in this show um, and it's performed beautifully i i i have to yeah. i have to say it's absolutely gorgeous yeah. um so I, our final question always is you since you are not from new bedford tell us what your favorite place in new bedford is and why absolutely it is called <laughs> Cork, wine, and tapas. Am yeah. I saying that correctly? Yes, okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, my favorite spot is cork, wine, and tapas. Um, it's like right on, it's like right across from the piers. Um, so you have this view, the view of the ocean. Uh, I'm a water person too. Um, so you have this view of the ocean. They just have some amazing food, some amazing wine and drinks, um, and a beautiful atmosphere. So yeah, go there. <laughs> Everybody go. Yeah. <laughs> we will. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. You can see Christopher Page Sanders here at Live on Stage, April 27th through May 6th at the Zaytarian Theater.